25 homework that was due on December 2nd. We went over most of these in, well, not most, a number of these in class, but I want to make sure um, you had a solutions here as well. So first one was a hammerhead shark. It gave you the width of its basically um, hammer head <laughs> uh, going through this strength of the Earth's magnetic field. And at this speed, you're asked to figure out the potential difference across the hammerhead shark head. And so that's just simply an E equals BLV formula. And you get 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth volts is your EMF. For problem four, um, you are asked, you're basically shown, you got a metal rod pulled along two frictionless conducting rails at a constant speed of 3.5 meters per second. The rails have individual resistance, but the rod has a resistance of 0.65 ohms. What's the current induced in the rod? So for this case, the first thing we need to do is recognize that this is going to be Ohm's law, but to get Ohm's law, we need the voltage, which is the EMF. Once again, that's going to be BLV. And because this rod is being pulled to the left, that means the flux is decreasing, so therefore it will induce a clockwise current that would add additional Xs inside this area and therefore oppose the decrease in flux. So we get 0.735 volts, and that comes out to 1.13 amps. I don't think it asks for whether it would be clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, to keep it moving at a constant speed then, I'm going to go back to this formula from chapter 24 <coughs> and realize that my pulling force has to be equal to the magnetic force that would be caused by 1.13 amps going through that, um, that wire, that length of wire and that is 0.24 newtons, and the pull must be to the left because the magnetic force would be to the right. For P10, it's asking you to figure out the net magnetic, or the net flux. This is two Tesla into the page, this is one Tesla out of the page, so obviously this is stronger. There's a couple ways you could have done that, but I just got the total for each of those areas, which is, the formula is flux the area. So that's that. Um, for problem 15, you were told you had um, a thousand turns in a solenoid and uh, it basically says it was two centimeter in diameter in a magnetic field. Uh, it changes from 0.1 tesla to zero tesla in 10 milliseconds. Um, axis of the coil is parallel to the field. So that really does mean that the it's a maximum effect. That's kind of like that, that area, that uh, BA coast state I was talking about. So anyhow, um, I'm going to do this. I got the area. This is change in flux for time is equal to the EMF there. So that's flux over time, 0.1 Tesla over 0.01 seconds multiplied by the area is 3.14 times 10 to the negative third volts. But we have a thousand turns, so that's going to be that amount generated per turn or per loop. So we end up getting 3.14 volts. That's very similar how do we felt more um, of a shock when we got at the big Tesla coil because there were so many coils um, that caused a bigger effect. For P17, I think we went over part C in class, but again, this is gonna be a BA cos theta, or BA is equal to the flux, and B, delta B over delta T is the rate of change of field strength, so we get the area um, I did the area up here, pi r squared, and then said it was changing at 0.5 tesla per second. And I could determine because these were dots that were increasing in strength and these were x's that were decreasing in strength, those would both induce a magnetic field to cause x's in here, which would be a clockwise current. And we talked about the fact that this loop is actually parallel to the, it's perpendicular to the page, but it's, it doesn't have any flux because uh, the axis of the loop, which is this way, is not perpendicular or have any component perpendicular to the field. For problem 20, you're given a current going counterclockwise. You're given the dimensions of the material or the, the loop. And... Um, 
you were asked, I believe, is the magnetic field strength increasing or decreasing? What's the rate of change of the field? Uh, change in field strength versus change in time. So to induce a counterclockwise current when we have a field going into the page, um, that means we this counterclockwise current would uh, generate a field with dots on the inside of that area. That means that the Yep, th that means um, that it will pose an increase in the flux. So the flux would be increasing. Field strength would be increasing. So to figure out how much of that there is, we could take the current times the resistance, which was given to us. I got 0.015 volts. Well, 0.015 volts is equal to that change in field strength per time multiplied by the area. The area is 0.08 squared, so that's like 0.0064, I think. So and if we get 2.3 Tesla per second. For problem 21, this says um, the field strength in increases from 0 to 0.5 Tesla in 10 milliseconds again. So I put that there, multiply it by the area, and I get that I'm going to get an EMF of 2 volts. Now, if this flux is increasing, the EMF is going to oppose that increase, which would basically cause dot or uh, X's in the center area. So that's going to create, try to create a clockwise current, which is actually the same direction that this battery is creating. So essentially that extra two volts is going to be pointing in the same direction as this power source. So I showed that in green down here. And that's how we get 0.55 amps going clockwise. I had said that if this field strength was decreasing, then our voltage would point the other way to try to maintain the field strength. For problem 65, I think that took a whole page for me. So we've got this thing. Um, it was actually pretty nice. I was a little sad that people didn't ask more about this one, but this is a nice problem. 10 centimeter wide zero resistance wire. Uh, push toward the 2 ohm resistor at a steady speed of 0.5 meters per second. Field strength is 0.5 Tesla. And the question is, what's the pushing force? So to do that, I need FB equals B times I times L. Well, E, I is equal to E over R. E is equal to BLV. So essentially, the current is BLV over R, which I could have gotten because this length of wire is 0 0.10 meters. Um, the V is here, 0.5 meters per second. The field strength is uh, 0.5 Tesla. So I could and probably should have gotten that current at that point. Um, in fact, I'm going to write that down. Point zero one two five amps. I figured that out by doing the math later. Um, so I could actually like I say I have BLV, which goes in for E here, and then this BLV over R, which is the current could go in for I here, and so I could really put all this stuff together, which I normally don't do, but I wanted to show you how you could do that. Um, I could do it stepwise, like I could figure out um, E equals BLV on its own, then divide it by the resistance of the wire to get the current, and then put the current in here. So the power is equal to work over time. Well, that's force times distance. It shouldn't be a cross product. It really should be a dot product, but that's okay. Uh, divided by time, so that's the same as since distance over time is velocity, force times velocity. So we get 3.12 times 10 to the negative fourth watts. Well, that's also equal to I squared times R. So I could actually figure out not only the power that I'm creating by pushing this thing, but also the power dissipated by the circuit, which is I squared times R, or I times E, which we would have figured out up here as well. Um, and so that's also 3.12 times 10 to the negative fourth watts. So it should make sense that the power supplied by you pushing things would equal the power dissipated electrically. So hopefully those help.